I've been told that we are going to gather here for both the morning and the evening the service. Uh, we don't want to make it very long. Both the times, the, by the grace of God, we are going to have one hour session. So by the time we finish our ministry in this place, may the Lord help us to understand that we are called according to His purpose. So that our lives may be purposeful. Our lives must not be without purpose. Sometimes when we do not walk according to the word of God, our lives become purposeless. See in the book of Acts and chapter 27. The book of Acts and chapter 27. This is the last journey of Paul the Apostle who is going to Rome. And before they could begin their journey by ship, and uh, sorry, chapter, this is, I'm, I'm very sorry, the chapter is, was, uh, it's okay, chapter 27. Paul had already uh, admonished the captain of the ship that uh, it's going to be very, very terrible, this journey. Uh, but the captain of the ship did not believe Paul. See, verse 9, really. Acts chapter 27, verse 9. Now, when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous, or because the fast was now already fast, Paul admonished them. And said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. Paul was very clear in his counsel. Very clear in his counsel. Don't take this journey so soon. Because it's going to be very, very dangerous. Not only of the things in the ship, but also of our life. Nevertheless, the century, the man who was in charge of the ship, he believed the owner of the ship more than the words by Paul. And then what did they do? Verse 13. When the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, losing that they sailed close by Crete. They were just thinking that we have obtained our purpose. But they, 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 they were not uh, successful in that. What happened? Verse 15. When the ship was caught, could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. Hmm. A ship on the sea without any purpose. When we do not accept 
the counsels from the scriptures and the godly counsels from the servants of God and our elders and our parents, this is what will happen to the ship of our life. We feel that I know what is the purpose. Against the counsel of God, against the counsel of the scriptures, we begin to do something. Uh, that is what will happen. Instead of going to our destination, we let go the ship and it was driving here and there. Seventy. They were trying to help themselves. Which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, straight sail, and so were driven. They were trying to do so many things to help themselves. But still they could not help. Still the ship was being driven on the sea. Verse 18. Being exceedingly tossed to the tempest, the next day they lighted the ship. They lost hope of their lives. No sun, no stars for 14 days and 14 nights. No food. It was a very terrible time. And then Paul gives in the midst of this terrible situation. Verse 23. So verse 22. For now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. In verse 21 he says, After long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, not have loosed from trade, and to have gained this harm and loss. Had you taken my counsel, you would have not have suffered this harm and loss. Many a times, because we have not accepted the counsels from the Lord and from the scriptures, we think that we know the purpose of our life, we have gained so much of harm and so much of loss. But the, but the Lord is very gracious. Still, if we obey Him, still, if we take His word, we are going to reach our destination. Well, we are called according to His purpose. God has a purpose for each one of us. We should know that purpose and we should follow that purpose. I am going to mention some scripture portions. Why has God called us? 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9. This is the first purpose of God's call. 1 Corinthians 1 9. God is faithful by whom he were called unto the fellowship of his son. 
Jesus Christ of the Lord. We are called unto the fellowship of His Son Jesus Christ. Secondly, verse 26. You see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. God has called the foolish people in order to confound the wise people. Thirdly, God has chosen the weak things of the world. He has called the weak things in order to confirm the mighty people. Fourthly, the book of Galatians in chapter 5 and verse 13. Galatians 5 13. For brethren, he have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Mm. We are called unto liberty. We should never live under bondage. Oh, the understanding of these purposes will do a lot of good for our hearts. I do not know whether we will be able to finish all these things. But we will prayerfully go ahead. Fifthly, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15. Colossians 3.15 Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. We are called to maintain peace in the body of Christ. Think about it. Why did the Lord call me? Why did He save me? Why did He forgive me? Why did He baptize me into the body of Christ? We are called to maintain peace in the body of Christ. Nextly, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 uh, and verse 12 that you would walk worthy of God who has called you unto kingdom and glory. He has called us to kingdom and also to glory. Seventhly, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 7 God has not called us unto uncleanness but unto holiness. After being born again, if we do not understand the purpose of our call and lead clean and holy lives, oh, we shall never be ready for the coming of the Lord. He has called us not to be unclean but to be clean and holy. One Peter and chapter two. One Peter and chapter two. And verse nine. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, 
and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are called to show forth the very Lord Jesus Christ through our lives. It is not enough that we should speak about the Lord Jesus Christ. We should show forth through our lives. What a great responsibility. What a great honor this is. The world has not seen the Lord Jesus Christ. The world does not want to read the Holy Bible. They want to see something. So we are called to show forth the Lord Jesus Christ through our life. Lastly, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 to 24. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 to 24. Even here unto very called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. We are called to suffer like Christ. When we think about all these things, we are called according to His purpose. The first thing, called to have fellowship with Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, called foolish people to put to shame the wise people. You see your calling, brother. Thirdly, God has called the poor people in order to confound the rich people. God has called the weak people in order to confound the mighty people. God has called us to liberty and not unto bondage. God has called us unto his kingdom and glory. God has called us unto holiness. God has called us to maintain peace in the body of Christ. God has called us to show forth the Lord Jesus Christ through our life. God has called us to suffer in the footsteps of Christ. And the Lord gives you time in order to lead meaningful and purposeful lives. We should try to meditate and understand these purposes of God. Otherwise, we will be thinking, I know everything, and we will be like that ship driven upon the sea. This morning we will begin with the first purpose we read in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 9. God is faithful by whom he were called unto the fellowship of his Son, 
Jesus Christ our Lord. We all know it very well that it was because of sin man has lost that fellowship with the Holy God. Because God can never dwell with sin. Please look into this word from the book of Psalm 94. The book of Psalm 94 and verse 20. 20. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? Psalm 94 and verse 20. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? Oh, can anybody have wickedness in his heart and also have fellowship? With the Lord who is upon the throne of holiness. The throne of holiness and the throne of iniquity cannot have any fellowship with each other. Second Corinthians and chapter 6 and verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. What fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? God is a righteous God. And about man it is written, there is no one righteous, no not one. We all are unrighteous people. And the Bible tells us very clearly that righteousness and unrighteousness cannot have any fellowship. When uh, we sin against God, God, we Adam tried to hide from God, Adam went away from the presence of God. Where we go? It is written in the book of 1 Corinthians and chapter 10 and verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 20. I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God and I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. All our religion, all our pious works, all our self-righteousness, whatever sacrifices we may do, Without accepting the Lord Jesus Christ, it is like having fellowship with devils. It is a very hard thing to say. But this is the truth that the Bible is saying. Oh, beloved, without the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever good we may be thinking to do, our religion, our sacrifices, our good work, our everything, as if we are having fellowship with them. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. It is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. It is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Huh? Oh, after losing our fellowship because of sin with a true and a living God and a loving God, man has entered not only in fellowship with the devils, 
but also in the fellowship of the unfruitful works of darkness. Oh, such things are happening in the world today, which is a matter of great shame, which we can't even pronounce in a in a uh, in a proper society. And because of the mobile, these things are increasing more and more, more and more. So this has become very clear to us. A man has lost his fellowship with the true God. Sin is the reason for the broken fellowship. He has gone away really far from the law. He has no purpose in his life. He has invented a religion. But that is not the purpose of God. He is doing good works. He is doing many sacrifices. But the Bible is saying these are all purposeless activities. He is only having fellowship with devils. Man is born away so far from the light of God. He has entered into darkness. Such shameful and very terrible things are happening. He doesn't even understand what he is doing. Unfruitful work, the fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. In order to regain such a man back into his own fellowship, God is faithful who has called us into the fellowship of his son. How far did God come? How far? How far? How far did Jesus Christ come in order to reconcile us? Look at this verse from the book of Psalm 22. The book of Psalm 22 and verse 1. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? 22 and 1. Mm -hmm. Why are you so far from hearing my cry? How far? Nobody can measure it. From where did the cry come? It came from the cross of our Jesus Christ. It is when we come at the cross of our Jesus Christ, we begin to understand not only the love of God, not only the grace of our Jesus Christ, but how far actually we have gone away from Him. It is from the cross that our Jesus Christ cried out. My God, my God, why are you so far from hearing my cry? So far we have gone away because of our sin. Do you know that Adam, when he sinned, God came to the place where he had committed that sin? In the same way, we sinned and we went away from the presence of God. He came so far. 
we know only through the cross of Calvary. There is a love of God. There is a grace of Lord Jesus Christ. And what happened on the cross? Luke's gospel, chapter 23. We know that the Lord Jesus was hanging between two thieves. And the Lord Jesus Christ was broken in his body. And the Lord Jesus Christ was broken in his heart. Lord Jesus Christ was suffering even in his spirit. For a long, long time, the Lord Jesus is not opening his mouth. Oh, how many things they were asking him, but he was not answering them. What does it mean? Was Jesus very angry? Was, was Jesus not up, was, was Jesus very upset with those people? Oh, beloved, after a long, long time, when the Lord Jesus opened his mouth, the first sentence what he uttered was, Father, forgive them for they know not what to do. Then we understand that even in the thoughts of Lord Jesus Christ, there was no anger, there was no wrath, there was no vengeance. There was love and there was mercy and there was grace in his heart. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And during that time, the work of grace started in the heart of one thief. And when the other thief was uh, reproaching the Lord Jesus, we don't want to explain anything more because we know these truths. But we want to learn the lesson. It was 40. But the other answering rebuke say, does not the fear God see the one the same condemnation? Do you not fear God? When he heard the Lord Jesus Christ praying, Father, forgive them. Oh, a great fear came into his heart. And because of that fear, some God's grace began to work in him. What is that fear? Psalm 130, Psalm 130. And verse 3. The book of Psalm 130 and verse 3. If thou, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who can stand before you? Uh, oh, that was a fear in his heart. Oh Lord, I'm a sinner. If you would mark my iniquities, I cannot stand before you. But for so, there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. If the Lord Jesus Christ will not forgive, nobody can forgive our sins. Luke chapter 5 to verse 24. You may know that the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ, has power to forgive sins upon this earth. In that fear, this is what he said. Luke chapter 23 and verse 21. We indeed justly, for we have received the due reward of our deeds, 
But this man had done nothing amiss. We have done many sins. We have sinned against the law of man. The law of man. We have sinned against the law of God. We, we have broken all the laws. We are worthy to die. But this man, the Lord Jesus Christ, has not done anything. He has not done anything against man. He has not done anything against God. One day when they were going to storm the Lord Jesus Christ, what did he say? For which good work you are wanting to show me? For which good work? Usually, if I say something against you, what you will say? What wrong did I do that you have said like this? But Lord Jesus Christ, He said, For what good you are doing this against me? He doesn't know how to do wrong. He doesn't know how to harm anybody. Both with God and with man, he did only that which was good. And today on the cross, that thief is recognizing this. We are sinners. But he is holy. We are dying because of our sins. But he is not worthy to die. Oh, the Bible tells us very clearly. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. Please keep Luke 23 open. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He was not a sinner. He was made to be sin for you and me. Oh, this is very difficult to understand. Oh, may the Lord give us a clear insight of the work of the cross of Calvary. This man was confessing. We are worthy to die. This man is not worthy to die. We have sinned against the Holy God. This man has not done anything of it. And then in the fear of God, he said verse 42, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. What a humble prayer it is. Lord, remember me. Don't leave me outside. I know that your kingdom is going to come very soon. That is the prayer of what he taught his disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. After this worship, the first point of prayer. The Thy kingdom come. Oh, beloved, we are waiting for the kingdom of our Lord. The days are fast coming to an end. Oh, let thy kingdom come. What will you do if you are not in the kingdom? What are you going to do outside the kingdom? Oh, the thief was praying to the Lord. 
Lord, when you come into your kingdom, you have called me unto your kingdom. You have called me unto your glory. I never lived for that purpose. I was wandering here and there. But I know thy kingdom will come. Don't leave me outside. Please remember me. What did the Lord say in his grace? 43. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Masanga. With me. Fellowship broken because of sin. That sin has been judged upon the cross. Precious blood has been shed for the remission of those sins. If we confess our sin, that blood will wash us and cleanse us. And that sin which had broken our fellowship from this true and living God. That fellowship can be restored at the cross of Lord Jesus Christ. You are going to be with me. You are going to be with me. Broken fellowship restored at the cross of Lord Jesus Christ. Though there is no other place, there is no other place, there is no other way, how can we be reconciled and brought back into the fellowship of Jesus Christ? It is only at the crucified Lord Jesus Christ and it is only at the cross of Calvary. And you say, hey, well, probably Jesus Christ, Christ, but we have to Calvary Christ, Christ, man. What a wonderful provision God has made for us. Do you remember the day when we came to the cross? Do you remember the day when you confessed your sin? I am sinner and I am worthy to die. But oh Lord Jesus, you have never done anything. You are the Holy Son of God. You are the one who knew no sin. You are the one who has never done any sin. In you there is no sin. Even your thoughts are very holy. But what a cruel death you have died for me. Lord, remember me. I never understood your purpose. I was wandering in this world. I had gone away far from you. But you came to that long distance in order to reconcile me. My God, my God. Why are you so far from hearing my cry? So far the Lord Jesus Christ came. That is the place of the cross of Lord Jesus Christ. Do you remember that day? What did you feel in your heart when you received that forgiveness? What change has it brought into our hearts? What does it mean to say, I am a forgiven child of God? Today thou shalt be with me. I believe that all of us who are sitting here, we all have this experience. But once again, we want to renew it. We want to think about this great love and great grace which He poured upon us. 
to the work of the cross. God is faithful who has called us unto the fellowship of his son. Fellowship broken by sin. That sin has been propitiated on the cross. And if you pass, let's say, the Calvary Cross, let's say, it's like a clinic or something. And at the cross, we can be brought into fellowship back with the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be with me. What a wonderful day, what a wonderful day, the day I met the Lord at the cross of Calvary. Those who know English, oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I wander in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. What a wonderful day. I was wandering away. But the day I met my Jesus at the cross of Calvary. Heavens came down and glory filled my soul. वो कहता है गीत लिखने वाला स्वर्ग नीचे उतर कर आया और मेरे हृदय को भर दिया. This is the meaning of salvation. When heaven came down and filled my heart. But dear beloved, this is only the beginning. We have to continue in the fellowship. We have to continue in the fellowship. Otherwise, again we will wander. So if we want to continue in the fellowship of the Son of Jesus Christ, if we want to fulfill the purpose why He called us, Mark's Gospel, chapter 3 and verse 14. Mark's Gospel, chapter 3 and verse 14. And He ordained 12 that they should be with Him and then he might send them forth to preach. He called them. He saved them. He forgave them. And then he told them, I want you to be my witness. I want you to be my servant. I want to prepare you. So be with me. God is faithful who has called us. If we be with the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be prepared to fulfill the purpose of our call. Fellowship continued with the Lord Jesus Christ by the word of God. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4 and verse 13. Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, they took knowledge of that man that they had been with Jesus. Hmm. Ah, there was no need to tell anybody. Looking at the transformation of their life, these disciples who forsook the Lord and fled away, now they become so bold. They are not very learned people. They are, they are not very rich people. But what they are speaking is something out of this world. They are speaking about resurrection. Those who are listening to them, they were thinking in their hearts. From where did they learn these things? Our high 
high priest has never preached about resurrection. Our high priest has never preached about all these forgiveness of sin. All these human disciples, fighting disciples, how have they become so bold? How are their lives changed so drastically? When they consider the transformation in their life, they understood. Oh, these disciples were with Lord Jesus Christ. Not because they went to any Bible college. Not because they were very big preachers. Not because they were very wise people. Oh, poor people. Weak people. Foolish people. But God found in the fellowship of Lord Jesus Christ. I want to understand these disciples when they were with Lord Jesus Christ. All the preaching the Lord was doing. All the miracles Jesus was doing. But what were the disciples doing? What were they doing? I want to understand. John's Gospel, chapter 6, and verse 34. Disciples had a very big hunger and thirst for the word of God. John chapter 6 and verse 34. Then said they unto him, the disciples, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And we read in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 36. The book of Matthew chapter 13 and verse 36. Then sent Jesus the multitude away and went into the house and his disciples came unto him saying declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field as long as they were outside they were hearing the word of God they were serving the people of God they are very very tired but after the multitude went away when they came inside the house they don't want to sleep. They are not worried about eating. They went to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, you were telling some parable. We did not understand. Please explain to us that there are parables. Oh, outside they were hearing and inside they were wanting to understand that parable. Unless we understand the word of God, we will never be convicted that the word is true. And the Lord Jesus told us, if we don't understand the word of God, the fowls of the air will come and pick up those words. Look at the hunger of the disciples for the word of God. They not only heard, they understood the word. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, Mark's Gospel in chapter 4, and verse 34, without the parable speaking on unto them, and when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. He was expounding the word unto them. That is a very clear counsel to all of us. Not only fellowship restored at the cross, not only salvation is the beginning of our fellowship, that fellowship was continued. It was continued with the Lord by the word of God. A new, a new hunger, a new thirst must come for the word of God. 
That is a special quality of a true disciple. He reads the word of God. He hears the word of God. He understands the word of God. He has the Lord has expounded the word to him. In times of weakness, sometimes we go away from the Lord. Like the two disciples are going away from Jerusalem to Emmaus. They were very disheartened, very discouraged. They lost their faith, they lost their trust. The Lord met them. And then through the scriptures, he expounded everything to them. Luke's gospel, chapter 24, and verse 27. Beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Expounding the scriptures means to understand the Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved, sometimes we are so anxious. We are so eager, we are so thirsty to know so many things in the world. What will happen to Israel? What will happen to America? What will the UK do in the last days? Oh, so many things we want to know. But in the fellowship with Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord expounds the word about Himself. The word reveals the Lord Jesus Christ unto us. Through the word of God, we are able to hear to the voice of the Lord speaking to us. When the Lord expounded the word to those two disciples who were running away from Jerusalem, verse 32, they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened the scriptures unto us? Whenever you are feeling cold, whenever you are feeling sorrowful, whenever you have lost the zeal for the Lord, what should we do? Go to the Lord. Sit at his feet. Open the scriptures. Let the Holy Spirit reveal the Lord Jesus unto us. Speak, Lord, I'm hearing. And the Father will start burning in your heart. That is the mark of a true disciple. It is not an activity. It is the word which brings that fire into our heart. If you want to continue in fellowship with the Lord, the more he will tell you about himself, that much more we will know about him. Little by little our life will be transformed. These unlearned people, poor people, timid people, from where this courage has come, from where this wisdom has come, something which even our scribes and the high priest has not spoken, they are speaking about resurrection, they are speaking about new life, they are speaking about the kingdom of God. Not only fellowship restored at the cross, 
But continue in fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ by the word of God. This word will completely transform our lives. I am close with this example. And evening again we will continue. A rich man had a friend. And uh, this boy Johnny, he was very, very talkative. Then his rich friend said, Johnny, Johnny, keep quiet for one minute, I will give you 10 rupees. Johnny said, if you will freely give me 10 rupees, I will keep quiet for 5 minutes. The rich man said, if you keep quiet for 5 minutes, I will give you 100 rupees. Because this man will never keep quiet. If you give me 100 rupees, I will keep quiet for 1 hour, he said. One hour, if you keep quiet, I'll give you thousand rupees. For thousand rupees, I will not talk for one week, he said. So this conversation went on. And it ended like this. If you do not open your mouth for 20 years, yeah, I will give you the three story building what I have. So this uh, conversation ended and that rich friend he took Johnny to his cellar, that underground uh, floor. One day was over. One week is over. One month is over. Johnny doesn't open his mouth. Whatever he wants, he will write on a piece of paper. Today I want biryani. Today I want that book. Today I want that newspaper. So he will write and his rich friend will bring to him. One year is over. Five years are over. Ten years are over. Johnny has not opened his mouth. After ten years, this rich man had two children. Both the children got married and went away. After ten years, this rich man was sitting with his wife. What a terrible boy this is. For the sake of this three story building, ten years he did not speak. 15 years have passed away. 19 years have passed away. Only 6 months are left now. During the last 6 months, Johnny is not asking anything. He is not writing anything. And sometimes the food what was brought to him last night, it was untouched even next day morning. And sometimes Johnny is just resting his head on the table. He is not even looking at his rich friend. Tomorrow is the last day. Wife and husband are talking. If he doesn't open his mouth tonight, he will be the owner of this building. We will be like beggars on the road. What did the rich man do? He poisoned the last food for his friend John. Last food. Last night. Last, uh, until last, uh, until 
Then he had a fear. Sometimes people don't die even after consuming poison. He took a long sword with him. When he was going into the cellar, the door was already open. And Johnny was not to be seen. He ran towards the table. In the center of the room there was a table. There was a white paper pasted on the table. And some red letters were written on the table. On the paper. He ran towards the table. I will tell you what he wrote in English and then we will translate. After obtaining the wisdom of the wise, I have learned the world is vanity. I don't want your property. I am going. After obtaining the wisdom of the wise, Gyan Yoke Gyan Ko Hansel Karne Ke Baal. I have learned the world is vanity. I don't want your property. I am going. Young brothers and sisters, even a preacher like me, what was Johnny reading? He was reading only the philosophy of the world. He was reading only the wisdom of man. And this is what he said. I have got the wisdom of the wise. I have learned this world is vanity. I don't want your property. I'm going. This is the Bible written by the only wise God. एक मात्र ज्ञानी परमेश्वर ने ये किताब लिखा है। एक मात्र जिसे बुद्धिमान परमेश्वर ने बाइबल लिखी है वो। I've been reading this word for the last forty years। मैंने ये बता चौदह परसों तो पढ़ते आए कुछ। चौदह ने चालीस साल। चालीस परसों तो पढ़ते आए कुछ। How many years you are reading? Have we learned the world is vanity? कि पति तो बड़े पर है कुछ। कि तब खा बड़े बड़े चीज़ संसार देता। Still we are craving for the world. Still we crave for the glory of the world. Still we are coveting the riches of the world. The world and the things of the world will pass away. Who will teach you? It is only the wise God. It is the wisdom of God which will teach you the world is right. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Do not be conformed to the things of the world. What is my fellowship with the Lord by the word of God? What did I learn in fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ? What was my fellowship with the word of God? What is the transformation in my life? We have to think about it. Fellowship was broken. Fellowship was restored at the cross. Now I'm going ahead. My fellowship is continuing. With the word of God. I will repeat those words again. After obtaining the wisdom of the wise, I have I have learned the world is vanity. I don't want your property. I'm going. Let them believe it as we continue our fellowship. With the Lord Jesus Christ, by the word of God, teach us the world is vanity. We may not love the world, we may not be conformed to the world, we don't belong to this world, we may be ready 